which we're joined by Chris Weaver, Chief Strategist at Troika Dialogue Group. Now, Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the program, first of all. Okay. But, you know, we're now seeing Mr. Putin, the Prime Minister, trying to vie for the presidency. Now, if he gets elected, it's going to be possibly for another 12 years. So investors, I guess, have to be very careful in saying, okay, they want to modernize this economy. Sure. But we, we may go back to a, a little bit of a difficult situation for investors. It, is we, this a pro and con? Um, no, we can't go back to the same type of model or the same model that we had when Putin was president last time. That model was very, if you like, inward looking. Uh, Putin was very focused on domestic restructuring, domestic issues, etc. And the, you know, about $1.6 trillion worth of oil and gas revenues that came into that period was responsible for the growth. That's now over, and it's very clear to everybody that that model will not sustain economic growth I I going forward. This right, next model has got to be based on investment. L let me ask you this, because I understand that the model has to be based on something else, but yeah. are investors going to be confident enough in Mr. Putin's ability to, to actually move on? He, he has had a rather, I wouldn't say dubious past, but certainly the controversial one. Well, I, look, that remains to be seen. I think it's, we, we've had some positive reaction, obviously, this week, as you've mentioned, investments at Siemens, Unilever, uh, and, and others in, in the last year. So it's going to be slow. And I think, yeah, we've got a legacy issues to deal with. People are well aware of the corruption problems, the, the governance, problem. governance problems, exactly. So these issues all have, to be, have to be dealt with. And what we're looking for from, if you like, uh, Putin's next government is going to be, you know, a, a priorities to deal with these issues, to start actually making progress on the list of reforms and changes that we already know about but really haven't been advanced so far. And do you think he understands that? He, he I think understands he does. that there needs to be a very strong rule of law, anti-corruption, to, to, to basically give the, the confidence to foreign investors. I think he definitely does understand that Russia needs to improve its, its a business case, its investments case, to attract these foreigners in. Putin, I mean, even when he was president last time, while still focused on domestic issues, he always talked about the need in the future to bring in more foreign investors, and particularly not just money, but foreign investment com expertise because this is one of the issues that Russia uh, has to deal with is the fact that we, we have le these legacy issues. But then you remember BP and, and that scared a lot of investors off. Well, yeah, but then the bottom line is that BP's investment in Russia is the single best investment that they ever made. So I think the, you know, the, 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 the message from the BP episode is, you know, don't be afraid of investing in Russia. Just uh, be, be aware of the risks and do your homework. Is there going to be a turning point if Russia gets into the WTO? Now, I know that, you know, these negotiations sure. have been ongoing for a very long time, but if it does, are we going to be, to, is it going to be a little bit of a catalyst, a boost for a lot of the equity markets? I hope so, um, because you know, Russia joined WTO. It puts another layer, if you like, of protection in for foreign investors, Russia is more accountable to another global body. And I think a lot of uh, in, in strategic investors are certainly looking at that as, a, as an indicate, not so much about th th that Russia is a member, but as a clear indication that Russia now is more serious about um, improving the investment climate, the business climate. As you say, I've been talking about it for 17 years. Joining now, I think, is one of those signals that we're looking for that things have changed. Improving business climate over the next four to five years? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, as an investor, how much risk you need to have or, or how much appetite for risk you need to have to actually go into Russia. Inflation is also a, at a record. They hardly have any manufacturing because basically they've mm. relied so much on the price of oil. Well, the, the inflation actually this year will be the lowest since the uh, formation of Russia. So year to date it's only about 5%. Uh, and we believe that around the end of the year it'll just be a little over 6% the same next year. So, so infl inflation is much more under control. I think the biggest risk that investors have in Russia is frankly is China and the global environment, therefore global demand for commodities. 